Hi, boys and girls. I hope you're having a nice day today when you listen to this uh, recording. We thank God for this opportunity. And today we're going to learn about humility. That's our lesson today. And before we start, let's say a prayer. Our Father God, we come to you this morning thanking you for this opportunity to learn your word, Heavenly Father. We thank you for life itself. We thank you for all the gifts that you Given, you have given us, Heavenly Father, even your protection, Heavenly Father. We honor you, we glorify you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. Now, you've been learning about the, the book of Daniel, so what happened. And today we are going to learn something on humility. We remember the last, the last time we learned about uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and the tree dream. He dreamt and he was very prideful. And when they, they, he was told what um, was going to happen to him because he refused to accept that God is the one, one who put him in power. He ended up going mad, he became crazy and he went and lived in the wilderness and he ate grass like, like cows for seven years. Finally, he humbled himself, and God elevated him back to his kingdom. Pride is disobedience to God. And God makes sure that we love him. But when you get prideful, that means you forget that all that we have, all that we are, is a gift from God. And at times when you forget that, that's when God has to do something to remind us, like he did uh, with King Nab Nabuchadnezzar. When we let sinful pride take over, we forget God created us equally. And subsequently, gifts, purposes, views, and trees are justly, those are gifts from God. But we start crediting ourselves with what we have. And that is not very pleasing to God. And you know, God being our creator, we need to honor him. We need to give him all glory as it is. So after learning about our pride leads to us to a fall with King Nebuchadnezzar, we continue to learn about four key characters, which is uh, magnified in uh, Daniel's life. That is strength, courage, humility, and faith. Daniel's life teaches us on how Christians can live lives that will be pleasing to God. Do you desire to please God? in your life, the way you live, what you do, and what you think. Today, let us learn about humility. Humility means being humble. So some, some time, now to start on, uh, on, this, on this lesson for today, some time back, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego survived the fiery furnace. You know when they were put in the furnace, and they, were, uh, they, never, they did not die because God was with them, and he protected them? And after that, King Dabjes had a, a dream which was disturbing him. That vision, he did not even understand it. And Daniel interpreted him for the, for, for him, for the king and told him that he would be like a wild animal for many years unless or until he gave up his sinful, sinful life by acknowledging God as Lord of all. Just as Daniel said, the vision came true, and King Nebuchadnezzar lived as a wild animal until he finally changed his ways. In fact, he even said, now, let me quote, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven because everything he does is right, and all his ways are just, and those who walk in pride, he's able to humble. That comes from Daniel, chapter 4, verse 37. But sometime afterwards, after King Nebuchadnezzar died, his son, called Belshazzar, became king. And he did not honor God at all. He forgot what he had learned from his father. And he was not even humble at all. Instead, he did his best to fight the Lord. Then a message one day came in when he was having a party. Let's find out what happened. King Belshazzar gave a big banquet 
and with no, thousands of nobles, nobles, those people who are who is who in the in the country at that particular time. Everyone at the banquet drank, ate, they had a very good time. And King Belshazzar wanted to impress his visitors, you know, the ones who were attending the party. So what he did is that he told his servants to go and bring all the ornaments, the cups, the plates that had been taken over from Jerusalem. And he used those for him. They were stolen from there, from the temple of God. And he was using them now because he told the servants, serve the wines and the food on these ornaments which you got from, from Israel. The Shatha did not care that these were special cups that were only to be used in God's temple. He ordered his servants to bring the cups and all the guests were given some of the cups so they started enjoying themselves. When everyone began drinking out of God's special cups, a giant hand appeared uh, out of nowhere. Nobody knew where it came from. It wrote words on the wall and the words were Mene, Mene, Tekel, Pasin. Now everybody panicked because they didn't know where the writings came from or where the hand came from. And they, they were all now very worried. King Belshazzar was also very worried. He didn't know what to do. And the asked his wise men, what does this mean? What, what is this message that has come from, we don't even know from where? But all the wise men in Babylon could not even tell King Belshazzar what the message said. And he panicked. He, would, he wondered, what do I do now? What will I do? The king offered a lot of money to anybody who was going to be able to interpret the the meaning of those words which were on the wall. And still they could not find anybody, but he remembered Daniel. So he offered Daniel a lot of money, but Daniel said he did not want any money. He told the king what the writing meant. Because when he came, when he was brought to the banquet wall, the queen had told King Belshazzar, there was somebody called Daniel from the, the Israelites. And he was able to interpret dreams. So that's why the king, king, king Beshad has called him and told him, come, look at this. What, what, does, what is the meaning of this? And if you interpret the, the, the words for me, I'm going to make you very, very rich, very powerful, and so on in the country. But Daniel was not moved by those kind of things. And he said, no, I'll just interpret the dream for you, but not because of the gifts you are promising me. Then he told him the meaning. He said, many means that your days are numbered. So the king's days were numbered as, as, his, as a king in that country. You will no longer be king for long. Tekel means that you have been weighed on God's scales and you are not good enough. Peres means that your kingdom is divided and another country will take away your kingdom. This, of course, must have made the King Belshazzar to start shaking and being worried about it. The king knew that what Daniel said was true. That very night, an army came and took over the kingdom of Babylon. Now the Medes and the Persians were rulers of the land, and Belshazzar was no more. His kingdom had gone. So, to apply this lesson in our lives, we have learned now that reputation is built on doing something over and over. To have a reputation for being humble, we must constantly honor and give thanks to God for all things. Whatever God gives us, we need to give him thanks. And that becomes a habit that whatever we get, we give thanks. And God appreciates that because we are part of, we are part of God. And when we are humble to him, he, he, he gives us things of our hearts, what we need, and he blesses us. The second point is that there will be many times in our lives that we'll have more than someone else. Get a better grade in school, or get better things than our friends, even at home. But you must never look down on someone else because they are less fortunate. 
Because all of us remember, whether you are poor or rich, you are God's child. And God is our father for whether for the rich, the poor, for all of us. So you have to remember that. For where you are and what you have, do not look down upon the others, forgetting that you and even that other friend of yours, you are all God's children. And whatever you have or you don't have, it all comes from God. It's God who decides whatever we do. Likewise, we should never think that whatever it is we have is because of something we did. We do not get things from God because of what we have done. No, we don't. All good things come from God, and he alone is worthy of our praise. And he does not give those gifts to us as a bribe just to love him more. No. He gives them to us because he's our God, he's our Father. And whatever happens is that he's in charge of everything. And as a reminder, our lesson today comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 5 verse 1 to 13. And our memory verse is, comes from John chapter 4, verse 10, and it says, humble yourself before the Lord and we lift you up. Remember? James chapter 4, verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord and we lift you up. So whatever you do, remember, God watches over you. And you should be humble when you're approaching God so that you don't say that whatever you have, whatever you have done, whatever the good grades you've got in school is because you worked very hard. No, that's a gift from God. So always remember that whatever is happening, whatever is around you, whatever you have, or whatever you, you, are, you, are, you are waiting to receive or you are praying to receive from God, everything comes from God. Keep that in mind and always remember so, we need to be humble, remember humility. And now as we end, let us say a prayer. We know our hands together, close our eyes, and we pray. Our Father and our God come to you this, this day, Heavenly Father, thanking you for what you are teaching us, Heavenly Father, reminding us, Heavenly Father, that we need to be humble. And all that we have, all that we get, Heavenly Father, comes, comes from you. It's a gift from you, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for what we are, for what we have, and even what others have, Heavenly Father. Because you are our Father, we love you, we honor you, we glorify you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen.